What's going on, tech fam? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Warner Bell, and this is Gadget Tools Unlimited. And if you've visited this channel in the past, you might you might know that I used to do these like top 10 videos, 10 commonly asked questions in an entry level IT interview for help desk or desk side support. And I kind of wanted to get back to doing those. I haven't done one in a while. So I thought now's a good time to go ahead and do one of those videos now. So that's what we're doing here. And if that's interesting to you, hang on tight, right? This is 10 more essential questions you might get in an entry level IT interview. And that could potentially help you land that entry level IT job, your first job, whether you transition or you new to tech these questions, how to respond to these questions might help you uh, land that job. So without further ado, we're gonna get right into it. And question number one is, what is a VPN and why is it used? So a VPN is a virtual private network and basically it's a secure way to connect to another network over the internet. So this use case for this is you're working from home. You, you got to log into your company's network so you can access data so you can do your job. Now you're at home. You're going to you're going to connect to your home Wi-Fi, you know, your home Internet service provider, whatever that is. You're going to connect to that Internet, but it's unsafe to, you know, access secure information over the public Internet. And that's where VPNs come in. It acts as a secure tunnel between your device at home while you're working from home and your company's network, their data. It's a secure connection so you can access it and do what you got to do. Now, a way to visualize this is if you've ever seen like uh, these shark movies or ever been to SeaWorld or seen anything or SeaWorld, you ever seen this like glass tunnel? where the people walk through and they can see all of the sharks and the fish and everything in the water around them, but they're inside like the, the glass tunnel walking through and, and the sharks and everything can't get them. That's exactly what a VPN tunnel is. It's a secure tunnel for your data. So in this scenario, the people in the tunnel will be your data going through. You're either retrieving or sending data to your company's network and all the sharks and everything, the filth of the internet can't dirty up your data when it's going through this tunnel. And so that's a way to visualize. It's certainly used to protect data when you're accessing it over a public network like the internet, which is a, a public internet, and you need to get to that data for your company securely so you can do your job. Moving on to question number two, explain the difference between RAM, R-A-M, and a hard drive. RAM or random access memory is just temporary storage that your computer uses to run processes. Whereas a hard drive is like permanent or long-term storage that you use to save data to. And a way to visualize this is if you're familiar with using computers, you ever had to like copy the text on a document or from some website in order to paste it in chat GPT or another word document. When you copy that text, when you highlight and click right click and copy that text, it's saving it to what is called the clipboard on your computer. Now, this is very this is a very fragile data location, because if you copy it, right click and copy something else, that data you previously copied is gone. If the computer crashes or you turn the computer off, whatever's on that clipboard just gets wiped away. And that's essentially how RAM works. RAM wants to keep this data close so it can use it while you're doing stuff on your computer. And you can visualize this as kind of the difference between your desk or your workspace and a file cabinet, right? Your day-to-day -day work that you're working on, the papers that you're doing today, you're working on today, are on your desk. You can easily grab them. You can easily write something down. You can easily read what's on the, the paper. It's right there for you. As opposed to if it was filed away in the file cabinet, you'd have to get up from your desk, go back over there to the file cabinet, file through it, find the data and whatever you need to do. Now, it's clearly safer in the file cabinet, but it's harder to access. The stuff on your desk, you you might have be working on some documents on your desk. You get up, go on vacation, be gone for a week, get sick, whatever the case may be. 
you come back to work and you don't know what these papers are on your desk. If the paper is still there, the document you was working on, somebody could have came by, knocked it off the desk. The, the housekeeping came by that night and cleaned up and threw some stuff in the trash. You don't know where it's at, right? Because you didn't file it in the file cabinet. You left it on your desk. So essentially, RAM is like your desk where you where you just leave your papers all sprawn out and they could get thrown away by housekeeping versus the file cabinet where when you get up and go file that paper in the file cabinet, you know it's safe when you come back to it. So that is the difference between a hard drive and RAM. RAM is temporary storage, so you can quickly access it. And uh, a hard drive is like a file cabinet, permanent storage. You, you can come back to it months later to access that, right? Next question, question number three. What steps would you take if a user can't connect to the internet? Well, the obvious things always come first in these scenarios. Is the Wi-Fi on or is the Ethernet cable plugged in? If it's a laptop, you got Wi-Fi or is it a desktop with Wi-Fi, check to see if the Wi-Fi connection is on. Make sure the Ethernet plug is plugged in and securely reseated there. And then if that is the case, then move on to the next thing. If, if those things were good, I would reset the device whether it be a laptop or a desktop or you might even reset the router the gateway the internet gateway uh sometimes these things have a way of glitching so sometimes you power it off power it back on that usually solves the problem if after you do that you check your cables you check your wi-fi you um reset the router you reset your device still no internet you could type cmd in your search bar open up a command line prompt type in IP config, hit enter. It'll show you if the device has an IP address. If it's getting an IP address, it's able to access the network. It just may not be able to access the internet and you can go down the line troubleshooting from there. Usually it's that first stuff, you know, reset the router, reset the plug, turn it off and on. That usually fixes these kinds of issues. Question number four, what is a firewall and how does it work? A firewall is like your personal security guard bouncer at the front door of your club. So your network is the club. Your firewall is the security guard. He's monitoring who's going, who's coming. Are you where you're supposed to be? You too young to get in this club. You can't come in here. Managers say you can't come in here. Y'all can't come in here. Y'all can't come in here. So it's blocking, right? That security guard is going to block folks from uh, entering your club that ain't supposed to be in there. You set the rules on the firewall and tell it who's as, who's acceptable and who's not, who to let in, who, who not. And so the, the formal explanation is it monitors incoming and outgoing traffic and decides whether or not to allow or block it based on predefined rules that you set. It helps protect devices from unauthorized access. Moving on to question five. What is the difference between HTTP and HTTPS? HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and it is just used for transferring data over the internet. HTTPS stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. The S stands for secure. That means that the data that is transferring over the internet is encrypted so that it can protect the contents of the data Lurkers on the internet can't see what the data is saying, can't manipulate the data or change the data. It makes it safer from folks who might be listening in to try to gain some insider information from data that you're transferring over the internet. So the S stands for secure, and you should always be looking out for this when you're entering sensitive information onto a web page like passwords and whatnot. If at the top in the address bar, that web address doesn't start with HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash, then you probably want to be careful with your sensitive data. Question number six, a user reports that their computer is overheating. What do you do first? Well, in situations like this, usually when a computer is overheating, if it be a desktop, it's not in a well ventilated area one of the cooling fans may have died or it may just be clogged up with dust the the exhaust port on the computer tower may be plugged up with dust the cooling fan may be crusted over with dust and it's slowing the fan down the fan can't spin fast enough 
uh, these things happen to these fans. They get crusted over with dust. They start spinning slow and then they eventually fail because there's so much gunk built up on it. Also, there's no airflow through the exhaust vent if the exhaust vent is clogged. If you're working with a laptop, same type of deal can happen with it, but it's a little different because a lot of times laptops have their exhaust ports or their uh, intake ports on the bottom of the laptop and they blow the heat out the sides. Well, if you got your laptop sitting down on like a blanket or a couch or something where it's pressing up against that intake, it can't draw in any good airflow. And so it causes the, the laptop to heat up. And if the intake ports are clogged or the exhaust ports are clogged, it'll overheat after using it for a while. So you always want to check to make sure the fans are running, check to make sure the vents are clear and not blocked, whether it be desktop or laptop. Get you a can of that compressed air and just go to town on the vent, spraying it, spraying it, spraying it. You could take the back off the laptop or the side door off the desktop and blow everything out, clean everything up and then put it back together, turn it back on, you usually solve your problem. If after all that, you still have overheating issues, it's likely because the thermal paste that sits between the heat sink and the uh, CPU is either crusted out or then spilled out or it's just so old it's not effective anymore. And you need to change that thermal paste to some new stuff that'll uh, effectively conduct that heat from the processor through the heat sink and out through the uh, exhaust ports. Question number seven, what is two-factor authentication and why is it important? Well, two-factor authentication, it adds an extra layer of security to the login process. And it, basically it's gonna require you to, instead of just having your login ID and password, you gotta have another form of identification besides that password. And the thing that most people are familiar with is when you, uh, when you turn on two-factor authentication, and you put your username and password in, it'll send like a text number to your phone and it'll want those six digits or eight digits or however many digits it is. And you'll have to input that in also to authenticate yourself to get access to whatever site or application you're trying to get into. So that's that code that they send to your phone. That's part of two factor authentication. It just makes it harder for attackers to access your account, even if they know the password. Question number eight. How do you map a network drive? Mapping a network drive, that's going to create a shortcut to a shared folder on a server or another computer. Say you got a desktop computer that's a family computer at home and you store all of your family photos on that computer. Well, whatever folder you got all your photos in, you can share that folder over your home network and every computer that's logged into that network can access those folders directly from that computer as long as it's on. So what you would do is on the computer with the photos in the folder, you share that folder, make sure you note the folder address. And then on any other computer in your house, you just have to map that drive to that computer. So what you would do is on a Windows machine, you're gonna click the Windows icon and you're gonna find this, find this PC. So it's a little icon of a computer and it'll say this PC. You're going to choose the map a network drive from the drop down menu, enter the folders network path address and assign it a drive letter and uh, presto, you now have easy access to those family photos in that shared shared folder. OK, moving on to question number nine. What is the difference between a static IP and a dynamic IP? Well, a static IP is a fixed IP address, it does not change. It's always going to be whatever you set it to be, right? Static IPs are manually entered. They're manually set. You choose what it's going to be. And dynamic IPs are automatically given out by a domain controller uh, or using DHCP, right? So um, for instance, a server or a printer will need a static IP address. Like if you got a web server that you, you need to access web files or something, an application, you don't want that IP address of that server to change. So you'll always know where it is on the network. And so all of your other devices will know where it is on the network. And that's the same thing with the printer. If you, if you don't put a static IP address on a printer, every time that printer has to reboot or shut down or power outage, it's going to call for a new IP address, get a new IP address, 
And now all of your applications that used to know the address of that printer doesn't know it anymore. You can't print to it. You can't even find it because you don't know what the IP address is. So situations like that, you're going to want a static IP for stuff like cell phones and laptops and little devices, electronics around your house that have that need an Internet connection. They'll just get a regular old IP address dynamically from DHCP. It doesn't matter if it changes. You can cut the device off, cut it back on, get a new IP address. And it doesn't matter because you just need to you don't need to know what the IP address is in order to connect to the network or connect to the Internet. All right. And last but not least, question number 10. How would you handle a situation where a user is frustrated and not cooperative? Well, the first thing you got to do in every situation like this is stay calm, right? Because if, you know, you're getting excited and they're getting excited pretty soon, you're going to blow up. Everybody's going to blow up. You want to stay calm, listen to that person's concern and empathize with their frustration. You know, put yourself in their shoes, let them know, make them feel that you understand what they're going through. Let them know you would be just as frustrated as they is. Uh, and, and you're not being able to be productive because you're having these problems all the time, it would bother you as well, right? Once you acknowledge their issue and assure them that you're there to help them, you're going to find a solution to the problem, fix it, and, and try to make sure it doesn't happen to them again. That'll go a long way with uh, calming them down. You want to use clear and simple language. Don't explain really intricate technical details to them. Just walk them through what you're doing kind of be like okay you said this was wrong with it i'm gonna check this first and if that's it or i'm gonna check the next thing if that's not it and walk them through your thought process and that'll kind of get them engaged with helping you determine what the problem is you'll be able to ask them questions like when was the last time uh it worked fine when did this problem start happening they'll be more uh ready to uh, assist you in finding a problem and it'll just make a better experience for both of you, everyone involved. And so that was question number 10, Tech Fam. That was, you know, a few more essential IT interview questions that might help you on your big day if you got an interview coming up. So if you found this helpful, go right ahead and like, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be putting out more of these. Go ahead and hit that bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I do drop these videos. And like I said at the beginning, I did a couple of other one of these. So if you want to see what the other, you know, 10 questions you could probably have, go through those. I'll either put them in a card, in card or link them somewhere so you can access those. You can definitely look inside the channel and it'll be there. If you got any questions or comments, drop them down in the comment section and I will do my best to answer them whenever I can. That's going to be it, fam. Until the next